We're here today with Aimer Leborn, co-founder of Paper Smart Industries. Thank you so much for making the time to meet with us. Uh, thank you for having me. What does Paper Smart Industries do? Paper Smart Industries is a startup. We specialize in manufacturing basic products we use every day. Pen and pencils from recycling materials. We have a simple mission to stand as a defender for the planet. Save trees, keep our environment clean, and promote the green future economy of Africa. How did you develop a passion for that? Uh, it came in as a passion. I'm born in a small village in West Africa where we have a very nice, vibrant biodiversity, trees. And um, after our university, I left my village. A few years later when I returned, because of this economic illegal mining which has been taking place in my country, the beautiful biodiversity has been destroyed. For my further, further questions, interrogations, they told me the trees were cut down just to go to China and make pencils. And then I said, pencils, because of pencils, they destroy our biodiversity. And then the idea starts coming to me that if we get an innovative way to make a pencil without harming the environment, keep, keep it the trees, then I got into this technology where it's so easy to manufacture the same pencil, same quality from recycled papers. The newspaper we read daily, we treat away, but it's a treasure. Those papers can be used to manufacture the pencils instead of cutting down trees, destroying the environment, causing the climate change and the issues we are facing nowadays. That is where the patient came in. And then I started doing the research in 2016, 17, I went to Singapore to study their technology, the advancement, biodiversity, their biomass technology in Singapore. We all know Singapore hot where they are today. And then I, I became so passionate about this. I developed further from Singapore to India. And then I came to the conclusion that no, we can do it if we believe in ourselves. So through that same passion of saving trees, we came to the cutting edge technology to make actually a real pencil from recycled materials in Namibia, in Africa. So the passion comes from saving trees, keeping the environment for the future generations. Were you, did you mention that you were in school? When you came back and saw that all the illegal uh, mining was taking place and they had cut down all the trees? Uh, yes, definitely. Just like uh, other kids, I grew up with the parent. I go to the primary school in my village, secondary school in my village. I remember in primary schools or grade zero, we were taught under a tree and we did not have a school classrooms. But it was fun for us because the trees give us that shelter we needed. Environment connected to the nature and we study peacefully. But today, if you go to the same place, everything is destroyed. Trees are cut down without being replaced. You know, illegal mining, waters are polluted, then no more rain. Climate change is real. But that climate change is caused by we, humans' activities. And it's clear, evidence are there. So, that's even leading to the birth of paper smart industries. So how do you get the newspapers that you recycle? If I take in Namibia only, we have over 20 media houses printing uh, news on daily basis from Monday to Friday. And um, as I speak to you now, over 100,000 newspapers are being printed and circulating every day. So we we see people on the street offices, after reading the newspaper, they don't know where, what happened to. It goes 
to the landfill, which stayed there for 20 years. Now, how do we recycle them? We have developed this channel to work with a local um, community organizations, most, most, tell them that, no, the newspaper you are seeing on the roadside, in your house corners, recycle them, put them together. We come to them, we wait this newspaper, we turn it into source of income. We buy from them so that they use that to encourage them to recycle more. Apart from that channel, we develop ourselves. We go to traffic light, those small boys who are standing there begging for money. We profile them, train them, and then send them to government offices. Government are the most consult people when it comes to newspapers. We, they go to the office. Instead of asking for them for money to go and buy bread, they collect those newspapers from their offices. They go to our depot, the point we specify for them, and then we give them money. Instead of standing at a traffic light begging for money, they are recycling these papers from office, corporates, of the government institutions come together and then they make money out of it. That is indirectly creating jobs for our youth, reducing the criminal activities. That's the way we, we develop it and so that so that we all, we all work together to make it this happen. I love that you also make it about creating employment opportunities for people that don't have that. And I read that you also work specifically to create employment for women and that 70% of your staff is actually women. Uh, why that focus? Oh yes, um, the research shows that women are the most affected by climate change, uh, job inavailabilities, and um, yeah, in all areas. But our focus on our workforce, women specifically in Namibia, because it's a local product, is made in Namibia. We have noticed that women, especially the single mothers, are more focused. And they are so creative. And it's okay. Uh, just like education. If you educate a woman, one a woman, you, indicate a, you educate a whole village, a whole country. Unlike you educate a, a man, you educate a single person. So we focus on creating jobs for women and uh, to tap into that creativity in women. And then we have, we never regretted doing that because anytime we go to the factory, women come forward. They even bring more ideas I never had. So that's our focus on women to for upliftment from the poverty, what work in the women. That's what we focus on the women empowerment and job creation for women. How did people react initially to um, Paper Smart Industries and to the product and to the idea of recycling? Uh, yes, it was, the traction was a huge welcome. Uh, we started quietly, we, keep, we kept it as the low profile until we came out, I particip participated in competitions uh, one organized by City of Window Financial Literacy, uh, you know, initiative. They are called FLI and uh, NCRST. They are institutions of government. So when there are so many competitions, I just went to one or two. By the time I step in, ideas of re recycling, I basically believe that is coming from the change of behavior, change of mindset. That's it. Look here. Climate change is real. But if we just talk about it without taking action, nothing will change. And that this company, Paper Smart Industries specifically, is doing recycling. They don't just recycle. They now transform those pro uh, you know, materials into a product which are biodegradable and they put it back in our fingertips. Pen pencils. Namibia, we don't have much rain through a year. It's a semi-arid country. So because of these drought issues, people realize that the more trees we have in the environment, the much more rain we do have. So that means if this company is doing that to save trees, 
one might argue that a tree cut down in DRC Congo does not affect Namibia, but we are in a global village. So I think that mentality changing, behavior changes, has make a paper smart industries being seen as a role model company, startup, which is doing something, they are small way to save the planet, to keep the environment clean, create jobs, and be a defender for the environment. What about um, when you were collecting the newspapers? How did uh, people, for example, in the government or in um, the people that you, the communities that you were collecting from, how did they respond? Their response was uh, very encouraging. Everybody wants to be part of it. Uh, even now, individuals, after reading newspaper bought on the street, they keep it, they take it to their room, their house. They keep it because they remember that, oh, I met a company, they were trying to recycle this newspaper to make pencils for our school children, even ourselves. Mm? Are you a doctor, an engineer, an architect? This is the product to make you who you are today. D yet we neglect this product, or we are not using innovative way of making this product. So, Paper Smart Industries is doing exactly that, using the cutting edge technology innovations to make the product and then doing a the recycling. So, the response from the population, I was so shocked. I never knew the will. People would just be willing. As I speak to you now, calls are coming every day. Come to my office. I'm in the northern part. I'm in the south. I'm in this. We have thousands, tons of newspaper recycling. So, that can tell you that people are willing to be part of. Is a social call, social enterprise. Everybody wants to be part of it. How were you able to fund uh, the business initially? For example, to to pay the collectors and to pay for the newspapers. I can imagine that there are machines. We were talking about this a bit before. How did you uh, fund everything? Oh, it's a long. The story is too long, but I'll cut it short. <laughs> Funding, funding, funding. Wherever I go, is what that's the question. But yet, Paper Smart Industry started with our own pocket, our savings. You know, uh, these days you don't go to someone knocking at the door and said, "Give me money. I have a very good ideas. The best ideas are dying." But you have to start from somewhere. Show an evidence that you are committed. So Paper Smart realized that from day one. Don't. I work for, I was an employee. I work for a company, I was saving my dollars to when it reached a certain level. I said, no, this is the time for me to risk. If I lose everything, I know. But there's something, there's a belief in what you are believing, what you have. So that belief was so strong that we started with my savings, with my co founder, and then we participated into some few competitions. We have won some award. They bought some, they contributed of buying some product with some machinery part for us, uh, like um, pencil sharpeners. We have a heavy duty sharpeners, which we bought from Switzerland. It's also financed by someone who noticed our effort. And then uh, apart from that, we got also a funding from local commercial bank. So last year they gave us uh, $3 million, $9 million dollars. And um, yeah, it's not enough, and money will never be enough. But we judge ourselves that no, we had enough to continue progressing. Apart from that, we raised also money from the client, our client the schools, uh, everybody, everybody. Because I, I will not mention only schools. I thought even from day one that my client was going to be in schools. But later, I noticed that though. Know, this uh, climate change initiative institutions or climate change institutions, defenders, I don't know how to call them. They come in, they order the product as a practical solution, which is helping addressing the climate change issues. So funding came from different angles, but we are still open to funding, especially grant. We never got a grant. 
I try some fuse, but uh, <laughs> maybe I'm not trying on from the right way, the right corner. But I'm still, we are still good trying. You've mentioned that for people to invest, they have to see evidence. What kind of evidence did you show? Um, or what was your first uh, prototype? Or what did that look like? Yes, the evidence here is prototype, as you said it. Prototype in recycled, you know, echo pencil itself. Uh, no matter how beautiful, how strong your business model, if you don't have that prototype product, people are saying, actually you are making it, um, they won't believe you. That make me started with our own small machinery. We got from, from our own money to savings. We make few product. Basically, my idea was not to sell the product. It's just to go and display that, okay, I don't have the opportunity, the money to produce this as a, a large scale manufacturing factory. But I can use this product as a tool to help educate the population about climate change. But it turned out to be a best-selling product. So people say, no, actually you don't need to do this as a activism, climate change activism. You use this product as a commercial product and sell it. So the evidence here is the prototype. We started with a pencil. This is what our first product was. An echo. This is what I made for the very first time. This product is made from the newspaper I recycle. Uh, the fur, the fabric around it is a flock from cotton. I went to a farm, a farmer I spoke to, I went to him, I took the cotton, I brought it, I used a traditional small machine to make the mixture. I brought the tomatoes from the same farmer, extract the ingredients I need from the potatoes to make a glue. So I put all these things together and I make the first product. But I made a mistake in the formulation so I could not sharpen the product. So. We, I repeat the process again, and then I got to this very first product. It sharpened so well, and it's the same product I used at the City of Window competition last year as a startup, a Window Startup Festival. I was the grand winner. And um, yeah, that is my product, my prot prototype to start with. And with that evidence, then the belief came in. So you learned how to do all of that, you said, when you went to Singapore to do research and to study. Exactly. Um, not everything is taught at school. Yeah. We develop some things from our own inner abilities. So I developed that. I said, okay, if I can make this with my hand, how can I multiply it in numbers? That is where technology comes in, innovation. Technology is there, but if you do not innovate it, is not a technology because you have to make it readily available for the client, the customers, or even the viewers. So that at Singapore, I've learned a lot. I know how to develop that. And then here we have, we are going strong. How can people access your pencils? It's so easy for the orders via our website, www.papersmart.com.na. We have our emails. Um, early 2020, we are going to revamp our website. We will turn into a commercial website where you can place the order directly from the website. And then we do deliveries. Just the leading time is two days. Yeah, because currently we produce up to 50,000 pencils a day. Uh, you've talked about your clients being uh, these companies that are also fighting against climate change. Um, does that mean that your clients are only uh, other businesses or are you selling also B2C? Uh, yes, uh, our, our clientele base is a bit spacious, it's large. Um, from day one when I was sitting in the garage, I thought about schools. Because when I was reading an article about only Namibia schools, we have over 800,000 learners which are government-sponsored schools. 
governments buy them stationaries. And I was taking the government of Namibia spent over 20 million Namibian dollars on pencil, pen and pencils. And I said, okay, as a climate change activist, pencils made from wooden, cutting down trees, pens made from plastics, and uh, plastics are being the most pollutant materials worldwide. With my innovative eco-friendly pencils and pens might make a difference, not only to help the learners in Namibia to write, to study, but to be this nature steward, to be the defender for the nature, to use this product as I'm using this product to be educated at the same time, protecting the environment. So I approached, I went to the Ministry of Education and inquired. They said, okay, I think your product is only for schools. But when the products come out, the institutions are more li liking the product. They place orders more than the schools because, I, because of whatever. I don't know. We are still pushing to find out what exactly prevented the schools to come forward to use only this product. But nevertheless, our mission is to put the product not in each school in Namibia worldwide, but in each home, in the hand of everybody, to use an eco-friendly product, pen pencils, to tell the story, to be the nature defender. At what point in time, because you were working before, at what point in time did you say, okay, let me do that. Let me go out, take the risk and, you know, quit my job and take on the risk of, of going out on your own to, to tackle this, this problem. Uh, that time it, it was a challenging. That time I could specifically remember when I went to the village, standing outside, I was not thinking about money in my pocket. Because we rely on, uh, we are from a country where you are taught at the school, go to school, have a diploma, certificate, and start working, get a job and start working. But that side of me, that very morning when I was looking at an environment, the biodiversity, the whole changes in shortest time, period of time, something prompted to me that now someone should do something, should take action to use something as a message, send a message to the others that the trees you are cutting down to make this product can live for 30 years, 50 years. Yet lack of knowledge making that not happening. If you go to a forest, a bush and you cut down that tree, not only be the person is after money, but it's because the person is lacking of education. Awareness that the tree he or she is cutting down can be beneficial to another person. Uh, even the nature where the person he or herself is living in. So that particular moment I said no, I'll use my product as communication tool. That means I'm having that a new spirit is being born in me that don't only be an employee. Being an employee, you won't have time to do this call, to respond to this call. So I came and I quit it. I quit my job and said, no, even if I'll go hungry, I'll use this word as a communication tool. That was the very moment I changed. I, I became a new person. So if I understand correctly, in the beginning, your idea was really more about the impact and about using what you knew as a communication tool to say, let me create this one pencil or these two pencils or whatever, and just start talking about this issue. Is that correct? That's correct. So in the beginning, it was not necessarily so much about the business, but it was about, let me tell a story with this pencil. And later on, you started realizing and believing more and more that you could turn it into a business. You are 100% right. It's not a commercial idea. 
is like a communication education idea education create awareness about a product a product which is important in every human being's life and as yet we neglect it we do not even value the product at the same time we are making this product by destroying what the nature has given us for free so our my product is not just a pencil this is a communication tool that was my idea i mean i love that and makes a lot of sense to me and i i always find it interesting how different entrepreneurs come about their business in different ways some might start the way you did like from an activism point of view almost and others think okay no let me start how can i make money and then they figure out okay i can actually use my business for good um, i'm always curious how did this point of realization come about for you like this okay i can use this as a communication tool was it in one single moment or did it take time for you to develop the idea what did that look like yeah um you know ideas don't just come one day uh, from that childhood experience uh, how i see the nature differently nowadays when we were young we used to run we happy happily eating fruit from the bush wherever you go bananas is everywhere there <laughs> but now you cannot get them anymore so that told me that you no know, things have changed but the change did not occur immediately it started progressively is it the same way the ideas come progressively as now if we if the traditional way of making this product and this product are harming they are helping us but other side they are harming the environment why can't we find an innovative way so that's what i said oh, before you start the innovation you what is the idea behind activism Uh, send a message communi communicate and uh, something you want to see a change in life of someone somebody or in a community or in a country so that is mine mine came as sending a message educating the population about the new change are you aware that things are changing if you say yes the changes which we are experiencing can be reversed if we do things differently otherwise we continue say ah i'm away i'm away until we all die <laughs> or we stop being who we are and the other side when you ask someone say are you aware things are changing the person say no that you know that that person does not know what is happening <clears throat> so one should educate such a person or something to show the person that yes there's a evidence of changes but these changes negative changes can be reversed by doing a b c so paper smarter started with a someone might be doing the b but nevertheless we are all we might be doing focusing on having the same goal protect this planet for better future it makes a lot of sense by studying in singapore you learned about the uh, production site then you innovated yourself you developed methods how the production site could function you tweaked your products i'm curious how did you teach yourself about the business side there's the production of your uh, of your products that you have but then there's also the the business side how do you find your customers how do you develop your market how do you uh, do the distribution and all this where did you learn that <laughs> is the same question came to me somewhere at a namibia procurement fund launching <laughs> they said how do you do that i said i i, I don't have a specific um words to describe that but what i could say it comes naturally when you well, you know we are human beings and we never stop learning anywhere i go to a competition i'm learning i'm hearing what the other competitors or participants are saying <clears throat> and then i said okay if you know i'm focusing my product to be a communication tool and uh, someone is seen not seeing it as a communication tool someone was seeing it as a product which can 
and eventually do well on the market as other like other product the Stedler pencils that we buy made in Germany uh, why can't we have something made in Africa or Namibia which can because the Stedler pencils and the paper smart industries pencils are the same quality they write well the same way but what is making the difference is because we don't have or is because we have not put that effort to learn to to identify how can we make this also a best selling product <clears throat> so how did they do it no you just do go to offices <clears throat> talk to people tell your story uh, confidently about your product what the product does what make your product different from the stedler pencils how do you tell someone on the street don't buy stedler pencils buy these pencils it's something i put up some few days to learn to say, how can I convince someone to buy my product? Mm -hmm. so, and then I just came to, oh, okay, do you know what? This product is the same size like a Stedler product, but the Stedler one, they made it from a timber, a wood. Mine, I made it from a recycled newspaper. The product is an eco-friendly, is a biodegradable. By using this product, you are signing a pledge to stand for the earth or you are making every day an earth day as our slogan business slogan said it so i was developing that slowly and when i'm talking to people on the street they said it seems like you are getting crazy about this product <laughs> what product is it can you give me i give a lot of people samples go home sharpen it use it write on paper but remember once you take a piece of paper you are writing with my product you are signing a you know a pledge that pledge is a strong you are telling me you are going to stand for the earth by discouraging people who are cutting down trees by spreading this message to your families your friends that i just got this pencil from this company they are using recycled papers which is the same quality doing the same job like a wooden pencil why do we use a wooden pencil which is harming this environment and not this product and uh, in namibia this product cost so less compared to the wooden pencil and it's really available well so this product is even cheaper it's cheaper than the than other the a wooden pencils we know on the market our product is two dollars the same hb writing the very well same way if you go on the market now the same product wooden pencil is costing seven dollars you could see the difference two dollars seven dollars so it's cheaper a good price for money if you buy these two dollar per pencils you can distribute it to your schools where you have learned how to write your name for the first time you can tell people about the story how eco-friendly product will be part of a behavior change what climate change need i really love that so you said uh, it seems to me that the way you learned about business was really about being curious talking to people asking them meeting people at competitions how do they, they build their businesses and then being very creative about really how do i convince people that my product is worth buying and you have a very strong story and your initial idea of using this as a communication tool, you've maxed out and really built on that. I'm very impressive and a, and a great learning. That is exactly what we did. And I remember um, there's a company from Germany, it's called Green Tech. The CEO was, um, he's called Eric Young. He was at a competition and he came out and said, a uh, young man, it seems like you have been doing this for so long. I said, no, the, 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 the length of <laughs> the number of years doesn't, don't matter. <clears throat> what matters is where you are going, the mission of the ideas. So he, he took a product, the product that day, at, he's a Cameroonian born, living in Germany. And he told me, he's going to Yaoundé, he's going to give it to some few people. And later I start receiving email from them 
said everybody want this product because there's like is <laughs> wow is wow in the whole you know blowing people's minds away so yeah it's a nice story to tell and um i continue learning from you for everybody when i go to the market i continue asking kids learners how how do you want to see this product do you want this product to be checking your bp every morning <laughs> when you hold it <laughs> so we have a long way to innovate this product do something taking care of ourselves think about the health sector how these products can even be used as <laughs> a product which is even send a message about ourselves technology is, as well, is advancing things are changing for better for us so we should be ready to grab it and use them uh, one more question what would be your advice to a young person in namibia today uh, it's simple in namibia is just like uh, i said it earlier that the problems of a young person coming from um, whether from a graduate or not we are all human beings we are all creative we have a hidden talent which is difficult to discover if we have not taken that step and then second when you take the step to discover that hidden talent uh, it's difficult to bring it out so my simple advice is any young person from namibia should be a seed you see a seed when you go to the farm you put the seed underground you put it you sow it it germinate and the bear fruit we should be a seed when the challenges the problems obstacles trying to bear you germinate and then you 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 will help thousands of people millions who come to you they never knew you were buried yesterday <laughs> That you germinate and be a fruit everybody is eating, like a mango tree. Just as simple as like that. Be a seed. When you face too much challenges, do not give up. Germinate. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.